Well, go to do it, dog. The time is time, life. We go through the dumbest timeline. Is this truly the dumbest timeline? Welcome to another edition of the Dumbest Timeline, everyone. Series 2 AI. I love saying it that way because it feels like it's you know this dramatic thing but if you guys are listening to the show you know i'm i i am serious about the subject but it's not that serious in my head although i would say some of you who've been messaging me or coming back to me on the subject feel that it's that serious because the energy has been hey we should not want artificial general intelligence like i said in the first episode but i i've i've said it i've been saying for years that i'm interested in the singularity so it, it's not new for me to make that comment and it's also not new for me to i guess defend the idea i'm not as much defending it as saying this is something i personally find interesting and in a world where ai is being trained properly and properly being an unbiased training which is almost impossible but in that world i want an artificial general intelligence singularity we'll see if we get there on this week's episode, we have a guest. We're talking with Samara. Samara is a colleague of mine from work who is also studying music production. And it felt like a great opportunity to talk to someone who's in a creative space while AI is is kind of growing the way it's growing, at the pace it's growing. Uh, in the last episode, I talked about Suno and Udio. So it almost felt perfect to talk to someone who is making music right after an episode where we talked about an AI or two AIs that make music. You know, like I said, Metro Booming's BBL Drizzy became one of the most popular biggest hits. If you notice, it was never officially released. It's not available on streaming platforms because the licensing for the song wouldn't have been possible as it was created with a sample that was generated from an AI. And those are all the types of things that I am looking forward to discussing more. But tune into this episode right now with Samara, and we'll be uh, we'll we'll be back with more after. What's up, everyone? This is Brian Holiday, and we're just continuing our series on AI, AI use, AI and art, AR, AI and creative spaces. We're here with Samara. Hi. Samara is a colleague of mine at work. Uh, we did a test run of this interview earlier, which you'll never get to hear. But in it, <laughs> Thank God. at the time, I referred to her as, as the intern because that is how you started out. But at this point, you've been a colleague for so long. You've done such great work. I felt like it was doing you a disservice calling you an intern. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm honored to be working with you. Oh, please. Not with me. With the whole team. <laughs> with the whole, obviously. Yeah, with the whole not team. just me. I mean, I, w- I would love if it was just me because I'd be special, but... <laughs> there's a there's a whole big team. So I uh, the reason I wanted to talk to you specifically is because you are currently, if I'm not mistaken, studying music production. Right. And in 2024, you know, AI became a big thing in the last couple of years. And you've been studying music production about the same time as AI has been coming up. Yeah. So I would Very say true. first thing, how does that even feel for you? I mean, in the school that I'm I'm in currently, it's not really using, we're not really using AI as yeah. much as like we should be maybe. Or oh, like, interesting. I feel like I use AI way more at work than I do at school. Yeah. Because um, we're just learning like the basics of production. And, you know, I feel like music has always been like without AI. So like why change it up now if it's only been a year that it's like so incorporated? True. Uh, it's We didn't talk about this earlier, but do you think, because it's an interesting point you make, you're not using it at your school. Do you think it does your you and your fellow students a disservice to not be learning about how AI is being used in music? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> even just like when you mentioned it earlier, I was like, I'm like so not involved in this whole AI thing, and I'm right. kind of scared of like how that's going to be when I actually work in music production. Like, how is that going to feel for me? Yeah, because if if other people are using it and being trained on it and then you come along and you've been trained this way you're now not necessarily playing catch up but 
you're you're going to have to reformat how you learn things in conjunction with the 100 percent. yeah 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 i and i asked you earlier too you making music and working as a producer and stuff like that now that you've seen because we you know we've played around with suno ai yeah and i think the other one's called udio uh both of which are being sued by the way for those of you who don't know but and when we talked about that, I remember the first time I played it for you, you were like, this is kind of crazy. That I was shook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, how can I spend like weeks working on a song and that takes two minutes? Yeah. And it sounds better than anything I've produced. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just, you know. Yeah. I, I, I would say it might sound better than anything you were producing now as a student starting right. off. Yeah. So I think that's fair. Because <laughs> remember, uh, someone said recently, if a human was to read every book ever create ever written they would spend it would take them like they could only get through like 80 million books in their lifetime whereas like an ai can get through 80 million books in a day that's insane so you're you know you're it's obviously a disadvantage but at the same time one of the things i always say is ai doesn't have like the spark it doesn't have the spark of creation it doesn't have like you know the greeks would say amuse like it's just mimicking everything that's come before right. it. It's not personal. That too. Yeah. I feel like that's the thing also like that I'm not so scared about with AI is that when you're a producer, like you can be with the artist and like communicate what kind of sound you want, uh, what vibe or whatever. But AI, it's like, I don't know, produce me a beat uh, that sounds like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And what have you worked with like some of the people in your class that you've worked with do you know if any of them are using ai outside of nobody no oh really nobody okay. i mean they use chat gpt for like studying classes sure right? sure sure it's not the same thing but music production wise no nobody hmm. everyone just like wants to do it like themselves i guess and have an advantage of being like good on their own first yeah and then maybe use ai to their advantage yeah i think that's fair i think like you know with the recent people I've spoken with, the kind of dichotomy has been some people see AI as a tool and some people see it as something that's going to ruin the industry. Yeah. They all agree, though, however, that big business is going to use it and abuse it and creatives are most likely going to use it and innovate with it if they right. do decide to use it. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like there's always like two different types of people. Yeah. Like, even, like, on SoundCloud, there's, like, artists that have, I mean, just people who use AI to produce, like, beats of, like, let's say, Drake. Yeah. An AI beat that Drake made or whatever, and it kind of sounds better than what he's actually putting out. That's scary, in my yeah. opinion. Like, I, imagine, like, your whole career, uh, you make, like, good songs, and you're, like, popping off, and then one person on SoundCloud makes an AI beat. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. I'm interested. I still think... The thing that will come, because I feel like the, you know, I I like AI, but not in the context of like taking over the world and stuff like some of my friends think. Right. I know some of you are listening to this and laughing right now, but I like AI in the sense that I find it interesting. First of all, what we have right now isn't even AI. It's, I still refer to it as large language models or advanced learning, like, systems because it none of it is it's not an intelligence it's not creating on its own it's right. just been able to mimic at a faster rate and i'm still waiting for the singularity version where we have an actual ai producer make something on its own completely from scratch and you're not scared about that you don't think it's going to ruin a lot of people's careers i I think it will I I don't think it will ruin careers because I think in our entire lives we've advanced with technology. Mm-hmm. From like and this is going to sound pretentious as fuck and I don't mean it to, but like Beethoven and Mozart and how they were writing music to how Christopher Drake, Hans Zimmer and all these guys are writing music for film. Technology has advanced so much that the way they write and the way they used to write is probably very different. 
They probably have tons of different things. They might even have new instruments that weren't even around at the time. They have different tools. They have different advantages for how to record the sound that they're making. Beethoven and those guys didn't even get to record their, like they heard people perform their pieces, but they didn't get to record it at the time. All that stuff I take into consideration. So the idea that if there is ever an artificial intelligence that comes along and can create on its own, I'm like, cool, but there's still always going to be a human doing something. That's I true. mean, unless they take over the planet. <laughs> which, <laughs> which uh, yeah, which then everything they, goes to shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which if, if they if they have taken over the planet and the uh, the AI overlords are listening to this, I've been a supporter since they won. And I welcome uh, the AI overlords. Oh, we know. I know. I remember that convention about AI and you were, you were there. You were present. The I was excited. Day. I wanted to be in the mix. Yeah. Uh, I find it interesting. I really do. Samara, thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. Is there anything else you would like to tell people about AI, your interest, your disinterest, your last final thoughts? My last final thoughts would be, I don't think I'm as scared as I once was after this conversation. I think that it will eventually help the industry in many ways. Yeah. Um, as long as, you know, producers and artists stay true to themselves. Yeah. And don't let it take over. Yeah. And I think also, fingers crossed, they get more control. Yeah. Yeah. I 100%. think I honestly feel that this is one of the things that I'll give my final thought. I've mentioned this before. I truly believe that in a world where artists have control of how AI is trained and used, we have a better chance of something positive coming out of it. Right. I yeah. agree. Yeah. All right, guys. That's another one. Uh, thank you for jumping in. And uh, you'll find all the info in the descriptions, wherever this is. Link in bio. Link in bio, as the kids <laughs> say. Thank you. Peace, y'all. And that's the end of that episode. Thank you guys for tuning in to another one. This is The Dumbest Timeline, part two, AI, or I guess series two, AI, as I said. Uh, make sure you guys check out all things Brian Holiday at Brian Holiday on all socials. That's H O L I D A E. And I'll be back for more. You can also check out my other podcast, Geek Cypher, Wednesdays at 7 15 p.m. on streaming platforms. Uh, we do it live, but you can also check us out at geekcypher.com, G W E K C Y P H A.com. And that's it. I'll be back with another one. Peace. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.